Digimon Seekers, Chapter 2, Part 2 Channel SOC is the grim-hosted headquarters of the code crackers known as the Sons of Chaos. Grim allows anyone to set up any kind of channel they want, so the SOC set up their very own safe haven on the network. Their top page features propaganda videos from the code cracker team alongside a range of other content, information about the digital world, Digimon trading tools for sale, miscellaneous chat rooms, and more. They've even set up a sort of virtual reality lounge where members can communicate with one another as their avatars. The room isn't that large, though, and the graphics leave a lot to be desired compared to the latest online multiplayer games. It's AG, the man, the myth, the legend. The hotshot rookie who took out the Digi Police is here. The voice memo posts were coming in thick and fast, and in no time everyone in the SOC knew about the fresh-faced code cracker who managed to take on the Digi Police in the wall slum and win. The source of the story wasn't clear, but word got out despite Eiji's interviewer being the only one privy to it. I'm the star of my own show. Eiji himself was the source of the rumor, of course. The SOC were interfering with the digital world far too much and putting Digimon in danger in the process. That's why Professor Ryusenji tapped Eiji to get close to Tartarus, the leader of the SOC, and find out why. So he set about making a name for himself as a hotshot code cracker, a name that Tartarus wouldn't be able to ignore. Okay, so I didn't actually make up a name and accidentally use my real name. Details, am I right? It's fine. It's a common enough name anyhow. Eiji sat leaning against the wall of his loft, his eyes fixed on the virtual monitor before him inside his Digimon linker. The SOC lounge is designed in a cyberpunk style, reminiscent of a plant factory city with pipes. On it, he could see the SOC's virtual lounge in Grimm. It wasn't so much cyberpunk as a factory aesthetic, a city full of snaking pipes that recalled some sort of industrial plant. Lugamon sat beside Eiji's avatar. They weren't mind-linked. It was obvious that he was a Digimon, even with the graphical limitations. There would be no mistaking his presence for that of a Digimon in the dock, a hololized image, or the stylized avatars of the lounge. This IG codecracker is a popular guy, Lugaman said flatly. Which is all according to plan, Eiji said knowingly. They weren't careless. Lugaman and Eiji established a private chat to keep people in Grimm's open chat from hearing Lugaman's voice. How convenient that all these codecrackers happen to think you're the hotshot codecracker. Lugaman continued dryly. Well, I actually am, you know, and one of a handful of top-class code crackers who can mind-link, A.G. retorted cockily. He was right that the hurdles to mind-linking were high. One needed a device capable of interfacing with the bleeding-edge Digimon docks being developed in A.E.'s laboratories. They continued to take a casual stroll through the lounge area. Ah, uh, what are you doing, Lugaman? A.G. looked in time to see Lugaman, back leg lifted delicately into the air, peeing on a steel structure, just marking my territory. You can't run around marking whatever you want. This is the SOC's public space, A.G. scolded. So I should make the SOC my army of followers instead? Come on, pal. We're spies. We can't attract too much attention. A.G. felt justified in setting their chat to private mode. It was impossible to tell what was going to come out of this mutt's mouth. Pal? Really? Lugaman protested, cocking his head. Well, you didn't appreciate me treating you like a superior. And since we're partners, pal, seemed like a safe choice. Lugaman didn't respond and simply lifted his nose into the air. The telltale sign that he'd picked up an interesting scent. Someone's running a search on me, he said quietly. He was being watched. Unlike Eiji, who was a person inside a loft, Lugaman existed as bits inside and Sosi hosted channel on a grim server. Should we be worried about that? Eiji asked. Well, I certainly don't like it. There, that's who's doing it, Lugaman growled, glaring at the avatar before them. A Digimon with large, cracked wings fluttered like a butterfly above an avatar rendered as a black man with dreadlocks. Airdraymon champion mythical beast, Vaccine. The Digimon looked like a dragon from Eastern mythology, snake-like, flying, and without arms or legs. I'm Marvin from the SOC. It's a pleasure to meet you, Codecracker AG. His tone was warm and friendly. The pleasure's all mine, Marvin. I've heard a lot about you. So, you've read my messages, then? Sure have. This is my partner, Lugaman. Lugaman appeared to say something more to Marvin, but his chat was muted. Airdraymon let out a series of sharp cries. Your partner? All right, then. I see how it is. Marvin appeared rather impressed. So, to what do I owe the honor? A.G. asked. A.G., according to my records, you applied to join the SOC channel just a couple days ago. That's right. Ever applied to join under a different name? Or belong to any other code-cracking teams? Nah, always been freelance. It was the truth. You sure about that? Are you always this suspicious of people? IG's heart was pounding. Well, when I hear that a rookie who joined within the last 24 hours absolutely embarrassed the Digi police, I tend to think that's either a lie or a story with way more to it, Marvin said through a smirk. AG kept quiet. Perhaps Marvin was genuinely wary. Regardless, AG now stood before one of the SOC's higher-ups. That had to count for something. But 
Eiji felt compelled to break the silence. I also don't think a code cracker capable of mind linking would go out of their way to do something stupid. Follow me and we'll finish this conversation. They walked further into the plant, passing steel supports and pipes spewing steam. Eiji received an invite code for Marvin's room, which shared the same cyberpunkish aesthetic as the rest of the channel. This is my private room on the SOC server, Marvin's avatar said in lieu of a formal welcome as he sat down on a chair. Eiji tried to tease out what kind of person Marvin might really be. Aside from a genius engineer, of course. So, you're a pretty big deal in the SOC, A.G. offered. There's no such thing as a big deal among us, but I've got some privileges on the channel, sure. The story I've heard is that you're the engineer that built Grimm. Is that true? I was one of the first core members on the project, but so were a lot of people. I just helped with a handful of lines of code, and suddenly I'm the self-proclaimed creator of Grimm, according to everyone else. Grimm's cabal of dedicated code crackers based it on a number of different apps. So you made all the Digimon tools, is what you're saying? A.G. was trying to connect all the dots. My main job is the creation and evaluation of those tools, yeah. If you want to put in an order, just say the word. First tool's free. A.G. glanced over at Airdramen. Its tail was tightly coiled around a catwalk above them. Lugamon was being led around the room by the nose. Something else entirely had caught the mutt's attention. Now down to business. The SOC's planning something big, A.G. But we don't have the numbers to pull it off. Well, there it was. The big operation professor Ryusenji mentioned. Don't have the numbers? Aren't there a ton of people in the SOC? A.G. asked, feigning ignorance. Oh, we've got way more members than we need. What we don't have are enough top-flight code crackers who can mind link and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Digi police. And then you showed up. I'm in. I'll do it, A.G. said bluntly. Pretty quick answer. I'll just assume you know how dangerous the job is. Marvin took a breath. An uncomfortable silence hung in the air. All A.G. could think about was his mission, spy on the SOC and find out what they're up to. He didn't have the bandwidth to consider the operation's finer details. Dangerous, sure. But is it that dangerous? Look, you picked a fight with the Digi Police and won. I get it. Marvin was impressed by this kid and he wasn't about to disrespect him. SOC hierarchy be damned. If they wanted a code cracker who could mind link, this was the level of code cracker they'd be dealing with in terms of mind link performance and influence. Was that bad? AG was suddenly extremely worried about everything. You gave the Section 11 Commanderman unit the boot and incapacitated its deputy squad leader for good measure. That puts a gigantic target on your back. They'll lock you up and throw away the key if they catch you. Yeah. Digimon, by the letter of the law, were tools of law enforcement. They would probably argue that A.G. destroyed police property, and that would be hard to wriggle out of. I guess I did wreck their faces. Satsuki was pretty pissed, too. Because you don't miss. We wouldn't be having this conversation if you didn't know how to handle yourself, Marvin said admiringly. Still, A.G. suspected they wouldn't be laughing if he told Marvin that Satsuki also knew his real name. So, this thing, the big operation you're planning, is Tartarus involved? Eiji was laser-focused. You curious about our leader? Well, yeah. My interest in the SOC started with Tartarus, whose code-cracking skills are the stuff of legend. Right, Lugaman? Woof! Lugaman barked and took off, dashing from end of the factory floor to the next. Whatever Airdramen tossed with its tail, Lugaman was on a mission to fetch it. Is that a ball? Eiji asked distractedly, staring at the scene before him. Your Lugaman is one protective and well-trained pup. Marvin said as he got up and walked toward Lugaman. Oh, uh, he's never really been around anyone but me, so... And he's a wolf, not a dog. Eiji's voice was filled with worry. Lugaman stared Marvin down as if to say, Take this ball from me, I dare you. Who's a good boy? Go get it! Marvin tossed a bit of data into the air, a bone-shaped treat. Woof! Lugaman barked and took off at full speed, eyes locked on the morsel. He sure does act like a dog for being a wolf. Hey, hang on a minute. He never does that kind of stuff for me. A.G. blurted out, suddenly green with envy. Tartarus seldom makes an appearance, Marvin said suddenly. Sorry? The higher-ups in the SOC don't know much about Tartarus either, but they've personally ordered us to carry out this operation, Marvin explained as he sent A.G. another invitation code. Operation Infinity, it read, quite the name. That's the channel where we discuss plans. I'll share the files with you. It's happening tomorrow at... Marvin was being very careful not to let anything slip, revealing the time to A.G. and A.G. alone. You'll get the rest of the details once we're all assembled here. This was it. A.G. now knew the name of the operation, when it was going to happen, and that they would be meeting in Marvin's room. It goes without saying that you'll need to be mind-linked. I can get you money for anything else you might need. Great! I'll message you later then, A.G. chirped, desperate to take advantage of this stroke of luck. An organization the size of the SOC must make boatloads of money off their activities on Grimm. He imagined he could expense whatever he wanted, whether he had the receipts or not. All right then, Marvin said. Catch you later. Actually, there's one more thing. Marvin let the words hang in the air, stopping A.G. and Lugaman in their tracks. You know anything about a black Agamon? Marvin asked pointedly. Nope, A.G. quipped. 
The silence persisted. He was desperate to fill it. I just know people are looking for one. Well, we're the ones offering the cash for it. The SOC. The one million DC reward? E.G. was floored. Marvin's avatar crossed its arms. It's pocket change for Tartarus, but finding that Agumon has become an obsession. End of chapter 2. Part 2.